What's up guys, I'm Sarah Weaver. Welcome back to True Crime Tuesday. Today, I'm going to be doing my makeup, telling you guys a story, but this week it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm going to tell you a story about things that people have found in their walls of their house. Um, I was inspired by the podcast, My Favorite Murder, if you guys listen to that one. So people will write in and tell them stories about weird things that they've found in the walls of their house while they're doing renovations or, you know, oh, my brother, like, and I were wrestling and he threw me into the wall, it busted open and a human foot rolled out or something <laughs> shitty like that. So I think these stories are super interesting and I hope you guys do too. If you do like this kind of video and true crime and all that stuff, please subscribe below, please leave a like, all the things, and let's get into this week's video. Alright guys, so we are going to start off with a story that I think is probably one of the weirder ones on the list here. Um, I have about 10 things I think that I found and there are so many more but these are just 10 that stuck out to me right away so I thought I'd go over that and I'm not gonna get too in detail with everything but um, obviously you can do more research or maybe I can do a whole video on one of these cases if you find that interesting. Also, I just wanted to let you guys know if you're curious about any of the makeup that I'm using in this video, um, you can just look down in the bottom bar in the description box and I will have everything linked there for you. This first story takes place in 1850 in Paris and a Parisian couple was living in this house and I'm guessing they were doing renovations or something like that. It doesn't really tell you the full story um, on this website I was looking at, but they were, I'm guessing, redoing their house. Let's just say that. They knock out a wall and a mummified baby. Mummified baby. Rolls out of the wall. Like, what the heck? I mean, I have so many questions, you know, just right away. So, um, they obviously, they report this to the police and they actually end up getting charged with the murder of this baby, which is so insane to me. I mean, how can you just like automatically charge someone with that when you don't even know what's going on? <laughs> I mean, like, why would they, why would they report it first of all? if they're the ones that killed the baby and I don't know. There's just some things in this story that like don't really uh, fully make sense, but you know. What happened was they were actually later cleared by a physician who was able to use insects to determine the time of death of the baby. And this case actually marked the first time that entomology was ever used in a criminal case like this. So I thought that was pretty interesting. They were able to use bugs that were found in the baby's body to determine the time of death, which is so crazy to me. Like I never even knew they could do that. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And then the story kind of goes on to just tell you that there have actually been cases of finding mummified babies in walls as recent as 2007, which is so crazy to me that there's still, who knows how many houses out there with just like mummified babies on their wall. Now, I wish this article would have like explained more why people were mummifying babies in the first place because that's a huge question mark to me. Um, and I mean, I guess I could have done more research, but I failed you guys on that one. It's just interesting, I guess, like, I don't know. I don't know, I'm like seriously puzzled by it. I don't know what to think. All right, so we're gonna move on to number two, which is witch bottles. 
Now, I didn't know what a witch bottle was either. I mean, maybe you do know, but um, a witch bottle, as in like a witch that rides on a broomstick witch, they are bottles that are filled with urine, hair, and nail clippings. And witch bottles actually used to be used to ward off curses that were placed on people by witches. So people would place them in the walls of their house. They'd have these bottles filled with the urine, the hair, the nail clippings, and they would put them in the wall or the threshold of their house to prevent the witch's curse. One of these bottles was found in Greenwich in 2009, and it actually dates back to the 17th century. And it's kind of interesting, researchers were actually able to um, do tests on this urine that are in these witch bottles, and they found one that had, um, in Greenwich, that had traces of nicotine in the bottle, or in the urine, I should say. So I guess we got some cigarette smoking witches out here. This bottle also contained leather that was cut into the shape of a heart and was pierced with a leather nail. Now, scientists are unsure of, you know, the symbolism behind that or what it was. It sounds like it could be voodoo or something like that. Um, they said they've also found some that have a heart and have brass pins going through it. So I don't know what that means. I mean, we got any like witches out there that can tell me, leave it in the comments below. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what the symbolism is behind that, but super creepy either way. No offense to my, you know, my witch followers out there, but. There was also a court record from 1682 that talked about a case of a man who thought his wife was a witch, actually. So he made one of these and he was told to gather a quart of her urine, um, nail clippings and hair of his wife and put it into this bottle and boil it. So he did, and I really wanna know what the result of this was. Did it work? Was his wife a witch? Also, how did he get a quart of her urine and her nail clippings? I mean, I just have a lot of questions here. I think that is uh, seeming to be a trend, even though I've only done two of these so far, but um, I'm gonna have to look into these more and get more information for you guys, because I know you're probably curious too, because I mean, what was he telling her, like, pee in this jug? Like, we're not gonna use the toilet anymore, babe. I think, you know, we just need to pee into jugs from now on. I don't know, that doesn't make sense to me, so. All right, so moving on to number three, we have cash. Now, I'm sure this is probably the most common thing that's found in walls because, you know, people back in the Depression era and stuff like that, you know, they had to hide their cash and they hid it in some weird places. Some people use like a mattress or, you know, a treasure chest. I don't know. But others like to hide things in their walls, you know, maybe have a secret door in their house or like use a, uh, what's it called? A picture frame and like, you know, put it over. It's like not really a picture frame. There's a hole in the wall behind it. So I'll just tell you one story about Bob Kitts, who was a contractor in Ohio, and he was renovating a bathroom and found $182,000 in the wall of this house. So I guess the owners weren't home at the time, and he was like, oh, you know, I better call the owners and let them know that I found all this money in their wall. I just, I mean, dumbest mistake you could make like of course you know they're gonna want that money right why wouldn't you just take some for yourself i mean 
Not that I'm suggesting, you know, someone steal, but like, that's a lot of money, okay? Like, that's a lot. I'm sorry, maybe it's just coming from like, a poor girl's perspective. <laughs> But that's a lot of money, okay? You can't tell me it's not. So what ended up happening was the owner of the house comes home and they're like, um, okay, we'll give you like 10% of this money you found. You know, you found it, even though it's our property, it's our house, like, you know, we'll still be nice and give you 10%. And you know, you were honest and blah, blah, blah. You, you know, you deserve 10%. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I want 40% at least. And so they're like, um, absolutely not. You know, we're not gonna do that. So then I guess this whole case goes public and I don't know if they brought it to the courts or what, but somehow the original owner of this house who was the one who stashed the money there. They find out about this and they're like, whoa, 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 that's our money. Like, you know, we want it back. That belongs in our family. Like, you know, you guys shouldn't have any rights to it. So what ends up happening is they take this all to court and it's decided that they all have to split this money evenly. So I guess they all ended up getting just a fraction of what they started with. So you know what, Bob, I mean, you really, really effed up, okay? You could be, you know, rolling in some dough right now, but you're not. It's so crazy though, like I don't even know what I would do if I found that much money in my wall. Like, I mean, I probably passed out. All right, moving on. Number four, four. So sometimes, you know, back in the day and even today, you know, we got mob people out here. We got some thieves, some criminals, and they like to hide their stashes in weird places, right? So sometimes people have found stashes of old mob members or gang members in their wall. So in the walls of his home in Oak Brook, Illinois, mobster Frank Calabrese hid some jewelry, firearms, and of course, cash money in his wall. And we're talking lots of it too. So in 2007, during his trial, investigators found out that Calabrese liked to hide all of his stolen goods in the nooks and crannies of his house. And after the trial, the feds ended up getting um, a search warrant for his house and they found all kinds of stuff. They also found recordings that were taped of certain criminal activities, um, interrogations and, you know, maybe torturing people, things like that. And it's interesting because before the trial, they had searched the home also and didn't find anything the first time. So he must have hid these items really well for them not to even be able to, to find it the first time. The police said they actually had to um, peel back some of the like wood paneling on his walls and they found things there. Just any like little nook or cranny. I'm sure he had like a creaky floorboard, you know, all that kind of stuff that he was hiding stuff under. All right, this next thing is kind of a weird one. And if you love cats, I mean, this might disturb you a little bit, but it's cats. That's the next item. I guess the practice of hiding cats in walls was another one of these weird rituals that people would do to ward off evil spirits back in the day. And I don't know if this was just in the UK, but it's said that all over the UK, people will find mummified cats in their walls. That shit is just so gross. Like, why would you put 
a dead animal in the wall or like a mummified like I know they're mummified so maybe it won't smell or whatever but I mean it's nasty it's still gross you know like <laughs> ew ew now one of the most famous stories of this happening is in Pendle Landshire when a mummified cat was found in the walls of an ancient cottage. And this cottage was presumed to be one of the places where this ancient coven would meet and do their rituals and all kinds of, you know, whatever covens do. In 1612, 11 men and one woman were hanged for being witches or at least being accused of being witches. Okay, moving on to number six. And this one I just thought was cute and I thought that you guys would enjoy it. So this was found when a man was doing a renovation in his bathroom and he found this note behind the sink in the bathroom. And I'll put a picture of it up here so you guys can read along with me, but I just thought it was cute. So. It's dated November 22nd, 1969, and it says, Hello, to whomever finds this, my name is Mike Silva Jr. Today is my 11th birthday. I am helping my dad put in the sink. Two weeks ago, Bob Micklish, I think it says, sat on it and pulled it off the wall. When you find this, would you please try and contact me to let me know? Sincerely, Mike Silva Jr. So I just thought that was so cute. Like this, this little kid, I can just picture him like 11 years old. He's like, this fat ass neighbor of ours came over here and sat on our sink and broke it off the wall. So now we have to replace it. And he's like, this is so cool i'm gonna hide a little note in the wall and like see if anybody finds it and i just think that's so cool it's like a message in a bottle or like a time capsule or something like i just think those things are so cool and like i really hope somebody reached out to this kid at some point i'm pretty sure he'd be like in his 50s or i don't know i'm bad at math 60s at this point so maybe they contacted him maybe they didn't but that would be so cool. All right, so let's move on to number seven. And I'm just gonna get into the story before I tell you. While remodeling his bathroom in April of 2011, a St. Francis, Wisconsin resident found a 20 inch long live missile with a five inch explosive head on it inside the wall. At this point, I think if I found this, I would like to think that I would just walk out of the house very slowly and I would call the police. I would be like, let's send the bomb squad over here right now. You need to get this thing out of my wall. I don't want to touch it. I don't want anything to do with it. Like, just get it out of here. Instead, this man and his wife take the missile out of the wall and they carry it out into the front yard. Like, why? That just seems so dangerous to me, like so stupid. Like that's the people you see on the news that are like, couple gets blown up by Korean missile found in their bathroom. You're like, what? How did that happen? Well, they were being stupid and they just carried it outside. Like, I'm sorry. I just get very passionate about these things. But seriously though, come on. You have to be on my side on this. So anyways, they end up calling the bomb squad and the bomb squad comes over and they dismantle the bomb and their neighbors come over and they actually tell the couple, yeah, you know, the man that used to live there before you guys was in World War II and the Korean War and he liked to take souvenirs home with him from the war. <laughs> I mean... What a souvenir, right? Like, not dangerous at all. I don't know why, like, even um, 
police couldn't figure out why he had a live missile. Like, what were you going to do with that? You know, like, I understand, like, keeping some shell casings or, like, something small like that, you know, but a whole missile that you could blow up? I mean, I don't know. Like, how did he even get it home with him? Like, again, all the questions, but no answers. So, sorry. Okay, so let's move on to number eight, which is a secret corridor. And I feel like this is a pretty common one too, just because I've watched too many horror movies and I feel like there's always a bookcase or like if you move this brick in the wall, like the whole wall opens up or like turns around and you're stuck in this tunnel or I don't know whatever so on November 2011 a couple moves into this new home and they are moving this bookcase out of the way what do you know it's a bookcase and they find this secret corridor in the wall behind the bookcase and of course they go inside check it out and you know, I'm sure they were hoping to find like some something cool, you know, maybe a secret lair, like a spy operation, Dexter's laboratory, something like that. And um, instead, disappointingly, they found a note. And basically the note says, hey, what's up? You found it found the secret passageway, but actually this is just a room full of black mold. So unfortunately there's no buried treasure down here, it's just mold. <sighs> so the note goes on to say, I only owned this house for a short period of time and found that there was a serious mold problem down here. So that's why we moved out. And actually it got my kids very, very sick and we couldn't live here anymore. And what do you know, the same exact thing happens to this new family. They start getting sick from this black mold in this secret corridor of their house. Like what a bummer. You find a house with a secret corridor and then you all get sick and you have to leave. But I guess they got their money back and you know, it worked out for them, okay, but I mean, damn, that sucks. All right, we got two more left. Number nine is a snake pit, okay? And there's really no sugarcoating this one because it's just a snake pit. And it was actually found underneath their house when they were doing construction. So they're doing construction, you know, they're digging into the dirt, and what do you know, they find a huge, huge, pit just of snakes and I'll put a picture up so you can see what they look like because they're freaking gross and I'm not a snake person okay I'm not a snake person I'm sorry but I'm not just how it is so it turns out that these snakes were poisonous too which is also terrifying like I don't know how they never got into their house or anything like that I mean it said that they like slithered up through the walls and like the pipes and stuff sometimes but I don't know how they would really know that that was happening, but I guess they're just assuming. So actually in an episode of My Favorite Murder, they have a mini-sode where someone wrote in and talked about, it's either the same case or a different case, which is crazy if this has happened multiple times, but I guess I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. In the My Favorite Murder episode, they actually talk about the smell of these snakes and this pit and I don't know if some of them were dead in there or what but I guess just the smell of snakes was so strong and so just like foul and they said now this is so gross to me <laughs> they said that the water in their house like from the faucet actually tasted the same way that these snakes smelled. Ugh, so sick. Can you, I don't even know what a snake smells like, but 
I imagine like this dirty, like nasty reptilian, <laughs> I don't know, smell. And the thought of tasting that in my drinking water and like knowing, I don't know how long they lived there before they found the snake pit, but I mean, you could have been drinking with that, showering in that for years and never known. Like, so sick. And in this article I was reading about this situation, the homeowner described the snake pit as Satan's lair, which if that doesn't put it into perspective, like that just seems like the most fitting description for a snake pit that you could ever think of. Oh, so terrifying. <laughs> you like how I'm like taking it out on my bronzer, I'm like, Oh my god. Okay. So, last but not least, we have number 10, a murder victim. The body of a woman was found in the wall of this house, and this woman had been missing for 28 years. And this happened in Poughkeepsie, New York, in July of 2013. When her body was found, her hands and feet were tied up and she was wrapped in plastic and she was also put in a big plastic container. Her husband had supposedly reported her missing back in 1985, but I guess he was never found guilty of killing her or anything like that, so... He just ended up getting away with it for all these years and nobody knew, which is so crazy. Like, I wonder if her spirit was like haunting him in the walls of the house all that time. I hope it was because obviously he deserves that. Okay, you deserve to be haunted, sir. So you're probably wondering, did this man get charged once they finally found the body in the wall. And unfortunately, this man had actually died a few months prior, like months prior to them finding this body. But even though they weren't able to have a trial and question him or anything like that, they are pretty sure that it was this man who killed his wife. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's True Crime Tuesday. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button. I would love to hear back from you in the comments as well. So I'm glad we got to change it up this week and do something a little bit different. Um, we'll probably get back on track next Tuesday with some more crime stories, killings, murders, all the creepy, interesting <laughs> cases like that. So I hope I see you guys next Tuesday and have a great rest of your week.